I was investing when Microsoft was, you know, a, a, a bull. Um, a bulwark for the market, and then again when it was left for dead under Balmer. And so I think um, what this tells us is that if the management makes the right decisions and adjusts, then you can return a behemoth back to growth uh, over time. I mean, clearly the, the fundamentals are better for Microsoft in terms of which space they're in, the cloud space, the growth they're experiencing. But I, I'm not willing to, to walk away from Apple at these levels. And I think um, this is an interesting time to be adding because this is what Apple Apple does, and I mean, I, I talk, I've talked about this before. In 2012, the stock was left for dead. Then, under Tim Cook, was the worst CEO. He was never going to be able to replace Stephen Jobs, and then he was CEO of the year uh, the following year, and the stock rallied dramatically. So, I think we have to get used to the recalibration of iPhone flat sales, no transparency. What's the next big thing? And I think we're going to find it services and something we haven't thought of yet. I mean, look at the, the Apple Watch. It's it's just kind of been a stealth. Outperformer, it's bigger than the whole Swiss watch industry. Nancy mentioned there, Mike, uh, Tim Cook, and uh, of course, for years, everyone rightly commending the extraordinary job he did transitioning the company uh, after the great innovator of Steve Jobs. We should pause to commend the work of Mr. Nadella at sure. Microsoft as well. An extraordinary run for them. Yeah, in, in a different way, right? He wasn't. It wasn't as if people. Uh, we're saying when he came in, how can anybody follow Steve Ballmer, right? right? Because Steve Ballmer was considered to have kind of presided over this lost decade uh, at Microsoft. But in, in very quickly uh, kind of orienting Microsoft into those faster growth areas and kind of liberating it from the, from the PC trap. Though I think it's interesting, Nancy, that, that Tim Cook is obviously a celebrated CEO and he filled Steve Jobs' footsteps and yet investors and, and some analysts on the street are not giving him the benefit of the doubt in making that decision to stop disclosing shipment numbers on iPhones. Right, because because Sarah, and I didn't answer your question, by the way, I own both stocks, but I'm closer to selling Microsoft and buying Apple than I was six months ago. We were doing the opposite. Um, I think it's because they get Wall Street gets embarrassed. They're like a, a woman scorned when they don't get the information they want. Then they begin to pile on, and you saw all the downgrades that came through. And and, and I just think it's an opportunity. Um, you know, it's just like when when Amazon was in the heyday, and they, I suppose you could argue they still are. Bezos, you know, it didn't matter what he did. Remember when he talked about the drones delivering packages, and everyone kind of looked at each other and said. I don't know about that idea, but the stock just kept going up. And, and now it's like Tim Cook can't get out of his, way, his own way. But I, I don't think this is Facebook. I think this is a company that will successfully negotiate this transition and they'll bring the street along. And it might take a while, uh, but for impatient investors, I think you're getting paid to wait.